side of the house, so it's lovely. And um, especially when it was blooming. So I took two shots, and I've, I've just got a couple of little buds and things here, which I'll make up painting and add them to it. Underneath here, Wait, what is the watercolour um, canvas treated with? It's it's treated with a very fine. It's not like a form of gesso, but it's much finer to make it um, have a water resist to a certain extent. But um, it's a very, very fine canvas as well if you have a look at it compared to the other canvases, the normal canvas that you get on duck. Beautiful surface. Did you buy those? So this is, yes, yes, this is a Frederick's canvas. Frederick's put them out. This is the largest one that they have, which is an 18 by 24. So um, the other ones that I had here are actually from Spotlight and they're a, a Renoir canvas. So you can get them there. But they're a little bit on the, the Fredericks are a little bit more expensive, but a bit a slightly better quality. Also, um, with the Daniel Smith colours, um, like I was saying, I have a, you'll see a hell of a lot of paint in here, but I've got a mixture here for, for landscape colours as well as a floral palette. So that's why there's so many in here, because I've got both both lots. But um, all those colours that I have here, I usually use all of them. So I know that might sound a little strange. <laughs> and you think, oh my god. But I do, in one way or another, always use all of these colours. So um, if you wanted to know what they are, mm -hmm. if you'd like. Um, I've got a cobalt uh, teal and a manganese hue, a cobalt, that's the same, always stays the same, um, and French ultra is the same, phthalo green, blue shade is the same, and a carbazole violet, which is very similar to a French ultramarine violet. And so, we so have what was that last carbazole. What's that smell? I've not heard of that. C-A-R-B-A-Z-O-L-E. Okay. Carbazole what? Violet. Sorry. Very, the same two um, French ultramarine yeah. violet. Very close, as you can see. And here I have an alizarin crimson. And it's a little bit, seems to me, a little bit more like a magenta in, in Daniel Smith than an alizarin crimson. Okay. It's quite, it's a bit darker. And I've got a coral here, quinacridone coral. So just like queen coral, you know. And um, a light red. And cad red. But it's not a cad red. It's pyrrole red. Yes, pyrrole. P Y R O L L. Red. A sepia. Here's a sepia. Sometimes sepia, sometimes um, burnt umber. So burnt umber is a bit warmer. Raw sienna, burnt sienna, they stay the same, they're the same. And uh, queen gold, quinacridone gold. And then I've got uh, cad yellow and aureolum. So their names are the same when you buy them. So along with those, um, that's what I use mainly for all my floral work. Nice fine spray bottle. And activate the paint always. Can I just ask about the grounds? I notice you've got I've the, got Daniel, the ground. Daniel Smith watercolour ground, but do you yes. use that on a normal canvas? Can you yes, so that? that's what you use on a normal canvas right. that you can get. Mm -hmm. So if you've got normal canvases at home, uh, you can get a pot of that, and it says one coat, but you need two coats because it, uh, and you need 24 hours between the coats to really dry. Yes. But it's really, really good, and then you don't waste canvases and you can uh, get the same sort of effects. So it's a very good thing for it. Um, and I find that the colours are very, very intense. The Daniel, Daniel Smith watercolours, very intense, highly pigmented. 
um, and, and beautiful, really quite beautiful. Slight variations, There's, there is a colour. Um, the only one that I can't get close to is a Windsor & Newton um, cerulean. And the closest is the manganese hue that I've come across. And I think. So it just depends on what you're using and how you want it to granulate. Um, you don't notice it so much on here, on a canvas, the granulation. Sometimes, I mean, you might see it, but you don't notice it as much as you do on paper. So um, it, there is a difference. On the yucca, that really you do see all the um, granulation when it settles and runs around, it just sits. Even though the paper is slippery and shiny, it, it still, you'll see the, the heavy pigment all settle in, in little spots. It's just wonderful. So it's something different. Now, nice fine brush, small, smallish brush. And I usually mix up, oops, usually mix up a sort of very watery grey colour with just a bit of cobalt and a bit of the red. Just make a grey, it doesn't matter which blues or whatever that you use for this. But, um, now sometimes if you want to, you can give this canvas a little bit of a scrub first with water and a bit of a rough brush and a bit of a rough up. But, um, I don't bother, I persevere with it and go on different layers. So, we'll start. I always try to, you can see here as I'm drawing, how it sort of, it does soak in, but you'll see how it sits on the top. I usually try to take all my photos as I would paint them in sections of the garden, so it saves me a lot of time. But then I'll add other photos in. And of course, always try and use your own photos, your own material, because you certainly are more passionate about the subject if you've actually taken the photo yourself. So I just do this very lightly. It's only, uh, and I do the same if it's on paper, it's just very, very, very light um, pencil. I'm just putting that in. So it ends up looking like a, sometimes I just pop the, always put the centre in of the flower because then it gives me the direction that it's facing. So that has to. This is a lovely little curly open one here. It's got a curly leaf. So I'll we'll just pop that there. You can come up and have a feel of the canvas, see how fine it is for those. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Now we've got little buds and things. And with the paint. Mm. Julie, don't draw with the pencil. Um, no, I never draw with pencil on here. It's too, <coughs> too hard. And um, it, it is so, yes, it, it yeah, it's too sharp mm -hmm. and too fine. Mm. And um, you are, you actually like, you could even pierce the canvas if you had a really sharp pencil. Mm -hmm. so, so you make a mistake, you just get some water and you can just get rid of, if you made a mistake with your drawing, you just take it out. 
so that's a lot, a lot easier than working with the paper. Mm. Well, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you can just mm. take that out. And think, oh no, I don't like that there. You know, I want to put something mm. else. So mm. you, um, it's, it's got its advantages really. Mm. Um, yeah. So, and as you see, when I start painting, um, you can also wipe out. I, even though I still keep my whites, I always like there's nothing purer than the actual white of the surface. And um, it, it might get slightly um, just sort of tainted with the, with pigment, even though you're rubbing it out, depending on how long you leave it. So um, have a look at your drawing when you do your drawing and, you know, correct it just the same as you would. Same principles really as if you were doing a, you know, a pencil drawing. So just make sure that you're happy with your composition and everything first because that's the most vital thing that you can do. Once you've painted it, it's too late and you don't want to muck around with it. So you really have to consider that and that's the most important thing and I think that's where most paintings can fail mm -hmm. is, is always the composition and is it pleasing to the eye and has it got movement and you know would your eye go all the way around it and things like this so you have to think of that before you start putting all the major colours in always so it's so important and um, I just think that that's that should be quite okay beautiful mothweed colours but to create harmony I'll just mix up Mostly all the colours that I'm going to use in the flowers and that will create my dark for the background. So it's just that I blend them together. So we've got the hot pink, we've got some greens, um, we've got the cool green as well and of course we'll have a very, very deep uh, purpley blue colour to mix in with that uh, to create the darks. And we've got some soft uh, lilac that will be in, in the flowers. So it's just that we'll make it a, a denser uh, mixture to put to have in the background. So I'll use a bit of carbazole violet. See how beautiful it is? A lovely rich colour. And over here we'll have a little bit of aureole. Now aureole is an expensive colour always, but you can use another lemon yellow that's a cheap, any lemon yellow. It's just that Oriolan has is, is got the limey, liminess, mm. more green in it, and I like that. So the couple of yellows I sit there, and a little bit of quinacridone gold, we might pop that in. fuchsia colour isn't it? <laughs> so we can always tame that down with a little bit of coral which will sit here. <coughs> and now I might just... I do this scrubbing with this brush. Um, the reason I like these if you've ever used watercolourists here that have used the Raphael Beautiful Big Mops, they'll, you, if you go like this, they stay that way then and drive you mental. This, just as you see, it springs back always to the point. So, um, I've got a great supply of these. Where did you say it was? Uh, I've seen actually in Sydney. Yeah. Only because I, I, I did mention it here. Go away. I'm trying to keep this on a pretty steep angle so that you can see that I'm not just a slight bit of light. Okay. And it will fade just as it does on paper. You rub the brush in. So let 
Just adding those blues, those mixtures of all the blues. Okay, there's a few buds there. No, it stays wet a lot longer than paper. <coughs> so you've got more <coughs> open time. But you've got a dry canvas. Per sorry, yes, perfectly dry. I haven't sprayed or anything. Um, Do you sometimes use a hair dryer to No, no, I note on here. Something else I don't do. I just like to see it run and and do its thing. So there's no chance of cauliflowers and runbacks. And Very seldom. Oh, that's a bonus, isn't it? <laughs> yes, there's a lot of advantages, but I do like things that just happen like this. Now I'll just mix in, I've got some yellow, but I'm going to, I need more of that blue. So I'll keep the same mix over here, have a little bit of this, and get some green in here. So it goes through a stage where you think, oh my God, do you know what you're doing? And, and it tends to look like a mess, but you have to be patient and then... Get over the hump. Yes, because it, it, you know, it will just look like this for a while. A bit more purple in there. Do you use the spray bottle sometimes? I just think it's so lovely watercolour to see it do this sort of stuff because that's the beauty of it. Just not letting it run and do its yeah. thing. As long as I put the colour mainly where it should be, some greens around here, some nice green here. I can spray this and it um, does wonderful things. See how the pink's faded? So, so this is what happens, you can end up getting, as it's drying, you end up getting your um, nice soft colour. No way, I have to go there. Normally, of course, I wouldn't have it on such a strict angle. It's okay. Run and you have, have got a sort of very soft petal, it is wise to wipe the most of the colour out back out. Okay. Will those um, little dots dry as intense hues like hot press paper? Sorry, Nathan? Will those little dots, will they dry as intense hues? like they do on hot press paper? Um, how do you mean? As intense as that? Or yeah, like, yeah, they oh, dry. these little dots? Yeah, they uh, they probably will, yes, if I don't disturb them. Yeah. yeah. But 
I like to have this, it's just the same thing that happens um, as on watercolour when it's running. And as you see, as it's as it's drying up there, it's quite pale. So it's still, you know, getting quite light. So I, I like that to happen. And um, because then I can go back over, and you've got some wonderful ghosting, ghosting flowers and things in here. And when I go back in. I um, the line that I've actually drawn with the brush. I like to um, then go over with the background colour. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that it actually then has got the pure shape without the drawing. It's just like <coughs> painting over your pencil mark. And if you let the colours actually mix on here, of course, then you don't end up with the mud. Yes, so we've got this nice soft feeling happening, but I really think we need to warm it up a bit at the moment. So I just, you know, don't mix too much in there. Before we go to uh, have a tea. Mm -hmm. It's in there. There's a there's a sort of a flower and shade in there. Now, I know that sounds funny and you think, oh, God, I can't see anything but mess, but um, the thing is, I will cut it out later. What do you mean, cut it out later? Um, just like a negative painting, possibly. Mm. Yeah. So as long as there's some colour there, um, I can come back to that. Mm. Mm. A silly question. No, nothing silly. Watercolour <laughs> silver bun framed. Well, you can. Yes. There's no protection, is there? For yes, them? these are all varnished. Um, varnished with a um, acrylic spray, oh. and I use a gloss. All of these are varnished with a gloss. Um, acrylic spray. So we can throw a red wine that's, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what brand do you use, Julie? A new art I found is really, really nice. And how many coats? Just one? Two coats, two, two or three coats, yep, mm -hmm. to seal. And possibly down the track, um, I might... Do um, you have the brand of it? Yes, that's the name of it. What I'm going to do now, um, no, I've just bought this so canvas up on a higher, higher tilt and I'm going in now with thicker pigment and I'm going to cut out and work around, pop some colour into the flowers so um, it is a little bit higher up and hopefully you'll be able to see a little better and this pigment now will come in and be quite, quite thick, quite thick and juicy. Two lots of purple here at the moment. Pop some yellow into that. When I say yellows, they're both the yellows. So mm -hmm. it's amazing how the paint dries out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Light too. Mm -hmm. Just the heat of the lights, mm -hmm. yeah. So I've got muck in there, two yellows, purple, and I've got the purple over here. 
or the violet. And I'm going to um, So they're fairly creamy mixes, thick. And I've got that lovely warm, which is the bird scarlet and a little bit of quinacridone mixed together, which is a really rich colour. So where we go. Tell me if I've got a trip happening somewhere that should be there. It's not, it does not react like uh, paper. As you would know, the paper would, would be soaking in where this just keeps dripping, even though this pigment is quite, quite thick. And if I'm going to do anything, I'll just wet my brush and damp it down like that so that I don't use the spray and it wets too much. All right. You are still an artist and creating creating with your brush as you come down. Use the side of your brush or the point. <coughs> That's where you need, especially for this sort of method that I use, it's very um, impressionistic. You need to have brushes that have a lovely point that uh, you can just twist and turn and, and I this, is this is where the impressionistic part comes in as you're pulling it together and leaving bits and pieces. Another silly question, do you paint the edges with like acrylic or something like that? No, I just wash them. Wash them back to white. Uh -huh. oh. mm -hmm. So this idea of washing is a good idea. Isn't wonderful. <laughs> it's going. There is another method actually, but it's done on a proper canvas and it's watercolour and it's done with a, um, it's mixed with an acrylic medium it's a, a technique, was, as there is so many techniques, but it's mixed with an acrylic um, varnish. So you put varnish on your canvas, clear varnish, and then you also mix your watercolour that you want to use. And um, I'm just tying this in together connection thinking, talking, because women can do that. Yeah, <laughs> which is well, clever. <laughs> when you put varnish on yes. can you paint over it? You could. You would need to probably really spray the varnish, the acrylic varnish, and quite get it wet again to really dissolve it. But I put about three or four coats on, so I have never tried doing that. I'm not that sort of person. <laughs> <laughs> Once it's painted, it's finished. Oh, <laughs>
Did you know him? Mm -hmm. He does know him. mixture of them. Very careful. You've got a lot of whiting flowers that turn um, Is that that bird's car? It is, yes. It's, it's just gorgeous. Do you go through and lift any of the paint off? Sorry? Do you go through and lift any of the paint off as well? Um, I might. A bit of hot pink on there. I will leave some paint out in there. I want to um, lift something out here and here. And it will be darker so I'll put them back in there. Just using just all those same colours. I don't. I haven't introduced any other colours.
scan for them all. And as long as it's what you can perhaps Is your cotton bud wet or dry? It's wet. It's wet. So, just need it done. Yeah. I just wanted to accentuate those little colours. There's a few that are pretty hidden in there. Just drift down into the mat, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be a bit careful. I don't want to have a um, <laughs> And I've got a light space in there because I just wanted it to be which you can create. But you have to have the corner, the round corner. You can't. You keep seeing things. You can't. You probably can't. <laughs> but you can negative paint all day because things just happen when you let the water come do its thing. So, but I'll let that go. And, um, and that'll do. No, mm. no, that's just it. I've sprayed it. I've sprayed it. It's been um, phthalo green and I've sprayed it and it's just oh, I've wiped it off. White, yeah. yeah, and that's what's left on the canvas. Julie, with the gum blossoms there, have you used squash yes. with a bit of yellow? Did yes. you see? Yes, spot I did. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I did on that. It's just to, to get the fluffy little bit. But other than that, there's no. Um, I haven't, you know, I haven't used any gouache, but um, hopefully. Oh, that's fantastic. That is gorgeous. That's lovely. Yeah. I might be suicidal after that. Suicidal? It won't be that bad. Thank you.